Okay, recording. Hi, everyone. Welcome to uh, Dynamic Data and Capabilities Working Group. Um, so let me share screen with you. All right, so start a recording. Please put your, your name on the attendee list if you haven't done so already. Um, is, that, uh, is there uh, someone volunteering to take notes today? On the second half of the meeting? I was the last one, so. <laughs> <laughs> what, the last one, yeah. Um, I could do it, I'm just still typing my, my sections. Yeah, sure, Jim, just, just for the second half. Thank yeah, you. I can, I can do it as well, if you want. Yeah, uh, either one of you, Arkady or Jim. Yeah, I haven't really done it before, so might as well. I right. guess I did it with our uh, pure pad test, but yeah. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Arkady. Cool, cool. thank you. Um, all right, uh, please add your items to the agenda if you want to discuss them on the second half after the, the updates. And so we're like six, six minutes past the hour. Uh, so we have like two, three, four, five, six, six, 24. Uh, so we have four minutes maximum for each update. Okay, so first on the list is Andre Cruz. Wanna give your update, Andre? Yeah, sure. So it's really not much to say, but um, sorry, you you canceled the screen sharing and I was reading it give me a second yeah all right so um, I've scheduled uh, two brainstorm sessions uh, on a few topics of identity um, one for today after this um, meeting and another one on, on Friday um, hopefully we'll get some uh, feedback and decisions on, on the topics um, also I've you know met, met a lot of people uh, during the P2P uh, week um, Pedro, Oli, David, and many other, Mike, and many other people uh, during that week. In, prog in progress, I've been um, preparing the, the meetings that we're gonna, gonna, gonna have, and I'm, I've been wrapping my head on a few uh, solutions, potential solutions uh, to present in those, in those meetings. Um, and as I said, the first one will be today. Uh, also, uh, for the, my next steps, I'll be working on um, <laughs> drafting a work plan for the identity manager, which has a few milestones and so on, um, so that I can present to Pedro and get it approved um, for, the, for, the, for the, the identity manager uh, milestones and so on. Uh, till the, the conference, Happyfest conference, will be presenting there the, the first uh, MVP of the, the identity manager, which has the, the core features and the visual interface to interact with it. Um, so the goal here is to make a work plan to make that happen. And that's it for me. Uh, thank you, Andrea. Do you think you can add some some links for the discussions that that are happening? Yeah, um, I, I was. Uh, I, I think the the repo is public, right? Yeah, yeah. But that would be useful if people want to participate. You can also um, do that, and once you have the invite. Uh, People can ask themselves to be invited. Any questions to Andre? No. All right, so next up is Andre Souza. Okay, hi guys, once again. Uh, so uh, from the last week before until today, I've concluded the uh, animation with a morph from the fab until the sidebar regarding Discussify. Uh, it has a mask now that just uh, scales um, a circle and it's revealed on the sidebar itself. Um, I revised with Pedro the, the fab button, the, the scale and morph, uh, which are already implemented. Um, a new accomplishment on the IDM uh, concept. So from the last week I had like eight proposals, uh, eight different approaches. On the, on the last Friday I, I just finished two, two more of them. And then to one of one concept was was chosen, and yeah, uh, we're going to kickstart uh, with a with a style guide. I already have a draft prepared. Uh, I already defined the colors, the typography, the fonts, and textiles to be used. The buttons, uh, specifically the secondary, the, sorry, primary, secondary, and tertiary, if needed for uh, darker backgrounds. 
uh, with the multiple scenarios, default, over, selected, which is focus and disable states. Um, uh, today, I've defined the key user journeys with, uh, with Andre Cruz for, for IDM as well. And now in progress, I have, um, I have started just today the, the sketching and looking for the information architecture regarding the profile, which is the identity page on IDM. Um, until, then, until then, I will uh, continue my analysis of uh, Keybase, which I start today as well, comparing with Blockstack, try to understand what they achieved the best and learn from the, their, their proposals and their approaches. And yeah, learn with those journeys and adapt for our proposal as well. And yeah, that's it. Also Keybase, right? Yeah, Keybase and Blockstack, yeah. Super interesting. Um, is there anywhere we can follow uh, that work? <laughs> yeah, uh, I will start documenting some, somewhere on GitHub maybe. So yeah, I'll let you know once we have something. Yeah. Okay, if you can then, when you have the URL, let me post the URL here in the notes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, that sure. could be really helpful because okay. like, I would like, to, at least myself, I'd like to follow that. Okay, cool. Yes. Thanks. Thank you. Any questions? To Andrea? No. So next up is Pedro Santos. Okay. Hi, guys. Uh, so this week I finished uh, the animation on comment edit mode. So when users click edit, um, a fading goes on and then um, the, the text area uh, grows a little bit. Um, this animation is finished. Um, and in progress, I have uh, the complex component that I told you um, the last meeting. Uh, the reason for this component is still in progress is that uh, I wasn't considering uh, uh, an animation um, that is, for instance, when you click reply, um, you have the text area uh, appearing on the on the view, um, and and you have a fade in, uh, and then when you click cancel, the, the opposite uh, uh, happens. Uh, but when users click enter for submit the, the reply, we have other uh, animation, and I wasn't uh, considering it. So I need to finish it first. Um, also, I have uh, completed a, a code pen, uh, two code pens, in fact. Um, one, one for uh, scale animation of the fab. I mean, when users uh, click or activate the extension, um, you have like a bounce animation of the fab. Um, and also, I have completed uh, um, the, the morph uh, animation that Andre Souza um, told uh, a minute ago. Um, uh, for this week, I have to implement these two animations on the app itself. And that's what I'll be doing. That's it. Any question? Yeah. Uh, could could you have um, the links to the code pen so that people could, you know, see the animation and so yeah. on? Yeah. Sure. Cool. Uh, thank you, Andre. Uh, Pedro, sorry. A lot of Andres. You're the Pedro. Uh, all right, so next up is Arkady. Uh, you're muted. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, sorry, bad mute management today. Uh, so yeah. a big nice thing that happened is that we uh, unblocked the uh, uh, WebSocket star uh, multi being uh, merged as the default uh, WebSocket star uh, connection mechanism in GSIPFS uh, 34.2, which is going to support us with offline use cases and also just makes things a lot nicer. So that's great. Um, in less positive news, I talked with Infra a bunch and they are basically so overextended that we should not rely on them uh, pretty much for anything for a little while. So uh, with the failing builds, uh, the probably the best thing to do uh, is to uh, just have uh, our own managed pipeline on Circle or Travis. I know it's been a little bit better lately, so maybe uh, keep an eye on that, but uh, 
it's I have I have a Heroku deploy credentials and uh, I'm also working on getting uh, the cluster team to give us either access to the community uh, cluster or uh, to set up our own cluster separately to do the pinning uh, uh, on there. And let's see. Uh, also, um, yeah, David uh, dropped the uh, Memex uh, demo on us, which uh, this is like a, a genre of software that I really like and uh, that I've seen a lot of examples of. So I'm going to see what we can learn from that. Uh, and I guess I also need to dive in on the collaboration UX discussion, which I haven't um, really had a chance to just yet. So, yeah. Thank you, Arkady. Any question? Sorry, what was the uh, the demo that we, did you say Demix? Uh, sorry, uh, Memex. So it's, um, here, uh, uh, worldbrain.io is so it's, uh, a presentation at Bustem, as I guess we could just learned about it. It's like a browser extension for um, uh, collecting a personal kind of data trail that's searchable and annotatable and shareable and so on, uh, similar to a hypothesis or something like that. Um, there's been a bunch of these, but I guess the reason that he found it relevant for us is that there is like a collaborative peer-to-peer -peer mode because it's 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 uh there's no as far as i can tell there's no coordination server so uh yeah something to look into awesome thank you um all right next up is myself i think um cool so uh, last week again was lip 2 p week team week and some ipfs folks were also there uh, so I we I went to Porto and and did some work and did some meetings live live meetings. Um, also reviewed and merged some great contributions to Peerbase. Uh, Dirk has been on fire uh, with with uh, some some fixes to the um, to the push and pull uh, protocols and and how that that works. A lot of um, superfluous messages um, are now uh, avoided and also on that on that uh, on that sense uh, GM has also been uh, uncovering some doing some fixes on Delta CRDT so I'm, I'm I've been testing some dependence so far I haven't I have not been able to break uh, uh, to break uh, synchronicity on like uh, eight and ten peers on on peer pad um, and and so it's looking uh, really hardened uh, this time I'm looking forward to having Delta CRDTs uh, um, green and 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 then uh, published um, also been working quickly uh, uh, in, Upgrading JSIPFS and using, uh, as Arkady said, Web, WebSocket multi, uh, so WebSocket Star Multi, uh, which allows for you to define different uh, servers and to even allow uh, not to allow you uh, to be offline when starting. Uh, there is a slight inconvenience because it it if the the server is not uh, reachable at boot time, it does not try to rebind to that server. Uh, but again, if it's a web web app, you can just reload when you're online, and it all should work. So that's uh, um, that could also be a workaround. Um, um, I think that's it. Uh, next up for me is. Um, Again, starting uh, like last week, uh, starting a, a chat app using Versidag or IPFS log and, and seeing how well that goes. Um, and then uh, for peer, peer base, uh, I've come to the realization that we need, uh, we probably need, and that will be uh, an RFC, uh, something to prevent flooding of messages that will implement like a sliding window protocol where the the pusher will um, will 
not be uh, fire hosing the puller uh, until the puller acknowledges some messages. Um, so that will prevent uh, flooding of, of uh, unresponsive uh, peers and flooding the, 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 the network stack and, and the network itself. Um, and that's it for me for last week. Any question? Yeah, Dirk? Um, yeah, I was wondering, uh, it sounds like there's a few different kind of like uh, mechanisms going on for WebSocket Star. There's a WebSocket Star multi, there's Stardust, and then people are talking about Relay as well. Do you have an idea of kind of what the difference is and where they're going with that? Of course, that's a great question. Uh, WebSocket Star um, is very centralized. So you, you, well, you can have different, uh, bind to different addresses. But um, if JS IPFS uh, startup was being prevented, uh, the, the node doesn't start if you fail, if you're offline or if you fail to bind to a WebSocket star uh, address. And WebSocket star multi allows you to define a collection of servers that you will, will, will bind to. And it will allow uh, for them to be offline at any, any given time. Um, and so allows to be that that's a more decentralized approach and then there is websocket uh, another project within that realm which is uh, websocket uh, stardust stardust yeah uh, stardust is uh, um, doesn't use uh, socket io i believe um, so it, it uses uh, WebSockets directly, so it has a bit less overhead on the server and on the client. Uh, and it, uh, I'm not sure about, about all the features, but I think that it uh, doesn't have ma many of the problems that, well, the, um, the, the scalability problems of a single host, uh, on a single host that the WebSocket star uh, had, but it's still, uh, um, uh, not, not a de definite solution and the definite solution uh, would be for one service discovery would be implemented on a rendezvous using the rendezvous protocol and the relaying would be uh, using the circuit relay uh, protocol and and so that's the rendezvous protocol is I think last week was closed the pull request for the, the spec was closed last week and the implementation of the, in the Go, Go IPFS is underway. I'm not sure about the JS IPFS implementation, but I guess it's not being um, advanced on uh, right now. But the plan is to eventually migrate to, to, to rendezvous and circuit relay. Um, I, I just want to add one thing. So the WebSocket Star Multi, uh, I kind of push that through into the release just to have the behavior that we want. It's not really the like a long-term thing at all. Uh, and they might, I think the fate of Stardust might end up with kind of being re-implemented uh, a little bit more in the Lipid layer. Uh, I think there's kind of a, a bunch of back and forth on that, um, but Otherwise, what they described is, is, I think, is the path. Yeah. Thank you, Arkady. Uh, any more questions? I think uh, Andrei Cruz, you had a, a hand. Yeah. Yeah. My my question was uh, if you created created an issue regarding the um, automatically retry uh, of the bindings of the servers that uh, were were unwishable, or even if I go offline and get back online, if it retries. So I, my question was if you create an issue, but I mean, um, I kind of said that it was temporary, so, so it might not make sense to uh, add, add, add an effort to, to make that. So. Yes, so I, th I think the real kind of online, offline uh, event-based mechanism would have to be implemented at a PTP level and abstracted from the transports. So uh, basically I think that's pending uh, kind of the real implementation of like multi uh, multi ports uh, uh, WebSocket star equivalent, so it's probably a little bit of time away. Yeah, there's there's this issue. I can I can paste you on on the chat for the the specific case of offline offline boot. But there's a bunch, two, two or three more 
uh, issues uh, exploring that that those subjects and yeah it's a good the off uh, the offline being offline or, or online uh, navigator API I don't think it's very reliable so uh, yeah lip 2 p should should have to yeah. to implement that because it, it knows what what the bindings yeah. the state of the bindings uh, exactly. are. It, it and then it would be transport agnostic so that mm -hmm. makes sense yeah uh, unfortunately uh, offline web is not one of our visionary goals for 2019 so we can't like really be like make this work but, yeah, but I think I think we could push it in further. further yeah, bit in yeah. The, I, th I, th I think if we're diplomatic about it, we can we can get something done. So exactly. Um, I think it's much better now that, in the sense that if we go to a workshop or a presentation or something like that, at least it works locally. If we point, uh, if you have uh, two servers, one uh, being the default uh, hosted by protocol ads, and then the other one. Uh, random server that runs locally, so at least it, it won't be like okay, I can't present this because I'm uh, I don't, my internet or my Wi-Fi is flaky or I don't even need the um, I have the internet connection, so it's it's a good um, temporary fix, let's say like that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I'm really happy it happened because there's so many cases where it would break really badly and people would be like, "What is this? This just doesn't work at all. Like I I, I can't do anything." This uh, and, and it's actually good for IPFS Conf because if Pedro or, or even me may, you know, give a talk or a workshop in there about peer base, it will give us more s safety in that regard. So it's, 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 it's kind of good. Yes, we, the, 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 the offline story, well, set, setting up an a, a, a application with, with that good offline, so a local rendezvous server and an internet rendezvous server still requires some, some custom configuration. Um, but I guess we can we can once this is done, uh, stable on on peer base, we can start then making that a, ple a more pleasant experience for the developer. Uh, sorry, side comment. I don't think I actually can take notes because my crypt pad is like just totally crawling. So I, I think I defer to Jim after all. Sorry. Oh, Jim, can can you can you? Can you accept that? Uh, I'll rewatch the video later and I'll write notes for it. Oh yeah, no, no, it, it uh, could be for the second half. Uh, but I guess oh. we're already doing some, some, um, so, some discussions. But I think I guess we should move on. Um, all right, after me, Jim. Okay, uh, I'll keep mine really short. Um, so uh, last spent the last half of the week and the weekend. In investigating the scrambled, uh, I was trying the scalability test. Uh, Dirk was pointing out that some errors on the CI, and that had been bugging me too because I've been trying to do some scalability things. And um, I have a demo afterwards uh, if we have time for it, and I can show you. It. Um, and uh, it was pretty. In I could talk at length about how I actually like solved it, which was really interesting. But uh, um, I solved it. So um, let's see. Also uh, on the weekend, I dived into learning. Uh, Getting up to speed with the latest happenings in the React community, basically hooks and suspense. It's really, really cool stuff. We, we should, uh, for some of our demos, we should actually use that. Uh, I sat in on a few Zoom chats, came up with some branding ideas. Um, let's see. Uh, so, anyways, I got, I got these fixes. I just have to write some tests for them so I can submit them to just um, JS Delta CRDTs. And then for the upcoming week, um, I have some offline demos I built for uh, that last year, and they're really, really simple. And if offline's working, I'm just gonna convert them over and make them work with PurePad. So, and I might actually play with the React hooks because that's really cool. And uh, I, I was it on a few Zoom chats. Uh, what, one of interest uh, is that there's a, a offline working group which people might not know about, but we have, uh, like Terry used to run offline camp. And so that's one of the offshoots of what they're doing. So it seems relevant that we should probably sit on in, in on that one. So. Is, uh, is that tomorrow? Yeah, I think it's tomorrow. It's on yes. the calendar. Um, yeah, um, I, I, went, I went to one of those camps, uh, Terry organized. Uh, it was it was great and 
spawned from the Couch DB community. Uh, but I guess, I guess now we we have to make a we may we have to make the the APFS story um, good at offline first use cases. Um, thank you, Jim. Uh, any questions to Jim? No. Oh, so next up is Dirk. Uh, yeah, so I've just been working on um, trying to find places where we can speed up discovery, connection times, message passing, and also to decrease the number of messages that we're sending, um, which also has a big advantage that we reduce the amount of cryptography. So uh, next I'm going to look a little bit more into how we establish membership and uh, trying to see if we can tighten that up a little bit. Thank you. Uh, I've noticed um, some really good performance uh, increases on 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 the local pass. Uh, time to convergence has uh, come down a lot. Um, those are great contributions. Thank you. Any questions to Dirk? No. All right. So I think yeah, Victor, you're up. Uh, hello. Uh, so my week was uninteresting. I spent four days for uh, poor theory, basically uh, reworking uh, redo and do in causal trees to make it fit uh, chain based uh, storage. So on the remaining day, I was uh, uh, making black box black box tests it is much better than unit tests because if the system speaks some protocols then you make basically inputs and outputs and then you run them and you see how it works so it is like less effort and it is not just unit testing but also integration testing and that's it great thank you victor um so, so a quick question. Uh, um, black box texting. You do the. You do. You do, uh, you, do you rec do recording or or is programmatic? Uh, well, doing recording is not actually that difficult because you may just redirect the stream, right? Mm -hmm. So you may feed it inputs and yeah. redirect outputs and then save them and then say like it is a correct answer. Uh, but well, uh, I'm not there yet. Uh, 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 right now, I'm just uh, one second. But ah, one second. I it tadam. Aha. So right now it looks more like this. So. Okay, that, that those were recorded. Um, no, no, no. Generated. Uh, these are inputs and outputs, so uh, like all of them. In. Yeah, what I said is that um, it's doing manually, but it will be easy to to record them and you know uh, stream the the recording to the input stream and check the output stream based on the recording as well, right? All right. Uh, I got one question regarding the undo and redo that you were um, sure. working. Uh -huh. uh, is there any, any article or something that I could read to understand the strategies uh, that you are choosing and implemented uh, in there? I, I may actually, I, I, you mean exactly what I'm doing or examples from literature, how it was done in other cases? Uh, yeah, more more like um, if I could, uh, if I wanted to understand uh, your implementation, your strategy regarding the undo and redo feature, uh, is there any text-based explanation on? I how I must spend ha half a day to put it on the replicated CC. Uh, like in theory, I should put everything there. Just to do it once, then, and, and then I may send the link. So, tell me the address or something, and I will send you the link. Yeah, 
right? Okay, cool. Put in the, in the notes or something, if you, if you could. No, it, it has to invite you, uh, Andre. All right, okay. You can send him the, your GitHub ID. All right, all right. Or, or email. Um, cool, thank you, Victor. Um, so, uh, second half. So we have like a, a demo from Jim. Jim, do you wanna? Okay, I'll just do a really quick one. Uh, okay, can you see this? Yes. Okay, so uh, here's, here's what I was doing before. So this is the uh, pure base, just, and uh, I've modified it a little bit. This is on my, on my Linux box. I'm gonna run a collection random test. And I tweak the parameters so it's running 15 pairs, uh, 15 peers. And it takes a little while to get started. And then uh, it's going to run here. So it's pushing, I think, 15 peers, and it's pushing 10 characters per peer. So the entire document will be 150 characters. It takes about 30 seconds to run. And you can see this, the some of these messages will need to be cleaned up, but that's what Dirk's working on in Pedro. And then it looks like it's probably close to done here. So, and so, well, so I dumped out, so these are all the peers, so peer zero, and then this is the 150 character, what was collaboration that was typed. And it's sort of long, but, you see, this one is different than this one, which is really bad. Like, you don't want to have this peer seeing a different uh, document than all the other pe peers. So, um, so I've got. Um, a, I'm going to show you my fix. Uh, one question, uh, Jim. Could, could you, uh, in terms of these tests, if you run it every time, it will fail every time, or perhaps sometimes? It will it fail, it'll it'll fail randomly, um, right. especially, um, but the more peers you add, the more likely it's going to fail. All right. All right. So, um, so here's my fixed one. I'll, I'll just show you the top of it. So basically, I could fiddle around with these settings here, like the peer count, how many characters are typed. I just made the type time out really long, and down here, I fiddle fiddle around with the 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 speed that the typing's happening because uh, if you, if you type too fast, it sort of overwhelms it. Uh, but if you type if you type too slow, things get bundled around and there's less de deltas, so so it's very sensitive to the the timing. So so this is the same test, 150 characters, and. Uh, so 15 peers, each each typing 10 characters at random. Um, now this is the part that everyone does a drum like. Yeah. <laughs> so, and these are the, the, the deltas flying around there, so. Um, Will it pass? Will it pass? <laughs> and the fact that the deltas are getting really long here is a, is a separate bug, um, so, which I think Pedro was talking about anyway. And there, so it passed. Yay! So, <laughs> we all got this one. And, uh, and uh, so apart from the being overwhelmed, if I can type slowly enough, I tested it as far as um, 12 peers with 500 characters each. So that was a 6,000 character long document. Mm -hmm. In 12 peers, they all synced it up. So, so I think I've got the problem solved. So. Uh, one question, Jim. Um, the, way, the way that I, that I was testing uh, data CRDTs, uh, that, that, that fix was through PeerPad. Well, you link data CRDTs into PeerBase, then you link PeerBase into PeerPad, and then you run the end to end uh, load tests. Mm -hmm. And that was a pretty good indicator of whether the fix was not, because if I ran it three times and there was no, no corruption uh, detected, and then, then uh, I, f I feel uh, better <laughs> that uh, I feel kind of confident that it, uh, it's it's uh, fixed and I, and I do that for eight or ten peer concurrent pads 
Uh, but I see that you've, that you've hardened the, the collaboration random uh, tests. I was wondering if you could contribute uh, to a, a pull request for peer based with, with, with that hardening of, of the tests, all the parameters that you saw that would trigger the being an thing. Because the, the, the thing was that in peer based, I couldn't uh, make it wrong. Uh, mm -hmm. well, uh, well, at least the frequency was very low for, for my experience. Um, but you've, yeah, but you've been able to, to make it more, um, more, more accurate, I believe. Yeah, I didn't really see it reliably until I got above, like, to, like, when I got up to 15 peers, it happened 100% of the time. Um, mm -hmm. But I had to actually tweak the, uh, disable a part of the test because at 15 peers, the DS set is only like six peers, so they don't all have the, the their clocks aren't all synced, so the test. Exactly, yeah, I had to. I had know, to it was, the test wasn't designed for the scale, so um, uh, I'll, I'll I'll try to contribute some of that back. So. There's a there's a PR I'm working on that also removes that well replaces that part of of the the test because exactly you don't know the the vector clock for every um, peer in 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 the the collaboration. Yeah. But for those that you know, you just check whether the the vector clock is the expected one or not. Uh, yeah. I replaced that. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty happy with this. Uh, I think with the product, um, do you think you, you, could, the, you could, uh, could protocol fixes to make it uh, less chatty? Um, it, this is really going to scale a long way. Definitely. Uh, do you think you could contribute with the, with the with that hardening of the of the tests? Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. And uh, uh, once you have Delta Cerity's uh, tests passing, I will integrate that into, uh, I, will, I will merge it to master and release Delta Cerity's and do the, the peer base uh, along with the JSIPFS upgrade and the uh, WebSocket star multi. Um, all right, thank you, Jim, right. that was very good. Um, cool, any, I don't see any other items on the agenda, uh, unless someone, is there, is there any uh, topic you would like you to discuss here? Given that we have a, a few uh, more minutes. Or any plugs? Um, Oh, I, I wanted to ask about uh, like IPFS con and kind of surrounding events. So I know Pedro, you're going to the data uh, Terra Nemo thing in Berlin, right? Yeah, exactly. Yes. So I, I bought I bought a ticket to that as well, um, and I I think I'm going to just kind of stick around Europe between then and um, and IPFS cons. So maybe it would be nice for people to meet up like uh, the like the week before IPFS con for something like that. Oh, um, that would be that would be a great good idea. I, I know that IPFS conf format is is not yet definite. So uh, yeah. I think the initial idea was was for it to be two days long. I guess it will be more. Uh, yeah. I'm not sure. Uh, but I, I think yeah. it will. Uh, depending on that we could we yeah. could uh, devise a get together uh, before or uh, once we get yeah. more definite dates, yeah, it's not that urgent, but I thought I'd want I you know raise the idea. I, yeah, I think there's going to be some like the last two days or the everybody IPFS conf and there's like lip to p days adjacent to it earlier, and there's something else. I yeah, I I, I think it'll be uh, kind of fully uh, settled within this week. So nice. Yeah, yeah. that's let's. Um... Let's schedule some some time is uh, 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 together for the DDC. Great. To me, that would be super good. Okay, excellent. Dirk. Uh, yeah, just seeing as we got a little bit of time, one thing I was thinking about, <coughs> um, something our Katie mentioned earlier was about uh, pushing some stuff into libp 2 p and uh, I'm thinking we may need to do, or we may need to encourage something similar some things we're discovering in connection management, like um, being able to cancel dials, uh, some of the discovery stuff. So I wonder if there's like, 
I don't know if we should just be sort of randomly opening issues or if we should look for, look, do it in a more methodical, systematic way. <clears throat> Um, well, the way that, that I've been doing is, I'm not, if anyone has uh, any other ideas, is, is, is that is, is opening an issue, for instance, if it's a peer based issue, open an issue in the peer base, then open an issue on, um, on the respective repo, or at least if I don't know what the repo is, I will open it on either JS P2P or JS uh, IPFS, and, and then keep, keep updating the, the original issue. With with yeah. with that, um, that's that's how I've I've been doing. Yeah. But that's a good question. I don't know yeah. what what yeah. uh, if there are any I, suggestions for. I think there's definitely interest um, in in doing more of this. So uh, I think you'll have at least a good conversation. Uh, yes, we we and I, and I, yeah, so some of the some of them. Um, I've been considering uh, helping and changing perhaps the WebSocket star multi and rebinding uh, would would uh, uh, require some 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 love from from some of us uh, or, or or myself even um, um, so still still up for consideration but I, the dial the dialing uh, the switch interface is in dire need of of support of, of several of these use cases. Um, yeah, that's what I was thinking on in particular. And it seems like, um, you know, like I, I opened some issues uh, around connection management, I think in November, mm -hmm. and sort of like one of them they're still working on and the others I don't think they've had a chance to look at. So I'm wondering if we should maybe get a bit more involved there as well, just like contributing more PRs and stuff. I think, I think so. Um, I would recommend like jumping on, on the calls and, and like creating the issue and jumping on the calls and, and, and asking uh, whether there is consensus around the, a certain solution, for instance, uh, a general direction before, uh, before starting the, the work. Otherwise, you, you, could, uh, you could have to unroll uh, the work, which, which is always, um, always uh, a pain. But, but but yeah, I think if we have the time, like dedicating that to making some pieces of lp 2 p or PFS uh, better to fit our, our needs and not better in, in the way that is like very specific better, but generically better, I think it's very welcome. Yeah. Um, are you talking about like the P, uh, P2P uh, connection stuff, right? Is that kind of like the... the uh, Dirk, the Dirk was, was talking more about, about the, the, the dial management, right Dirk? Yeah, there was a couple of, uh, they did fix some stuff for us actually very quickly um, around preventing double dials and that kind of thing. And then we uncovered some other issues. Um, one is one I just discovered the other day, I haven't brought up with them, uh, which is around canceling dials. And then there was a couple of other issues um, that like they're sort of like halfway through working on. One of them, I basically fixed it and then they found that there were some other it it revealed some bugs in another part of libp2p, so they were they were going to look into that. Uh, so I've been kind of going through and fixing what I can, but I don't really have the knowledge, you know, to make big changes in uh, in the switch. Um, and I think, as Pedro was saying, we we may need to take a pretty close look at the code for Stardust before we integrate that. Um, it's a very complex piece, uh, so I think maybe we could contribute some tests and maybe just code reviews and that kind of thing. Yeah, the, the 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 hard part of the switch connection management is is it that it's a stateful uh, API, uh, so it keeps a lot of state there, and so it, so that that prevents a lot of concurrency. A lot of if there are concurrent calls for 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 dials or cancels, it's the the, the API is not really prepared for that. But there's no handle for for a dial, for instance. And that's something that we put, we put in peer base itself, but I, I agree we should be rolling that into um, switch, for instance. Um, and there's a lot of, of small tweaks that we 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 will eventually have to to start um, pushing towards uh, lp 2 p and and IPFS itself. Um, and we should we should start enumerating uh, some of those. 
that would be a good a good effort to start enumerating things that we could like trim down from peer base and 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 prepare to to start going into um, into lib p for I'm, I'm thinking about for instance uh, gossip sub if instead of using like flood sub uh, which tries to connect to every discover node gossip sub has a more scalable topology kind of similar to what we have already developed for for peer base but specific to the gossip the sorry the, the pop sub interface um, yeah i think that's a good idea Uh, just out of my 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 head, but I, I agree. We I, I should I should get that that um, that discussion started. Um, things to push into um, layers beneath. <laughs> okay. Um, any more? Any more questions or points? No, all right, so uh, I guess that's it. Thank you for coming uh, and I will see you next week. Bye-bye.